you. Please be seated. Good morning. Come on, that was pitiful. A group this loud, big should make a lot more noise than that. Let's do that again. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. That's what we like to hear. Very wonderful. Uh, welcome to everyone here today in the sanctuary, and welcome to all of you that are joining us live through closed circuit te cable television at the Elmcrest Manor. And also a welcome to those of you that will be joining us later through your various electronic devices after we get the service downloaded onto uh, YouTube and our website. I have some announcements to make. Today is Worldwide Communion Sunday, so we will be having communion today. And of course, we'll have it on our regular Sunday as well, which is the third Sunday of the month. Uh, Trans World Radio is going to be our mission's emphasis for the month of October, and you have that information in your bulletin on how to give to that worthwhile organization. Uh, a reminder, church council meeting tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m., and as always, the notes are in your boxes the Friday prior, so you have time to take them home and look them over before the meeting. Uh, there's going to be a missions board meeting on Sunday, October 24th, after worship service. You should all be aware of that because I've called each member of that committee this week, so that's by way of reminder. You have other announcements in your bulletin. I would encourage you to... Uh, to look those over at your leisure. And I know we have a bunch of birthdays, but before that, are there any other announcements? If you have an announcement, would you please just come to the microphone at this time? Good morning, everybody. I uh, recently had to switch jobs, um, not by choice, but um, it was part of what I think God had planned for me. And so I'd like to announce that I am the new Burley County 4-H Youth Development Extension Agent. And today starts National 4-H Week. So I strongly encourage you, if you have any children or grandchildren, that you do enroll them in 4-H. Even though I'm in um, Burley County, you can do it here in Morton County. Um, I owe everything, kind of my life and how things have gone to growing up in 4-H. I started when I was six years old. Also, if anybody would be interested in volunteering in Burley County, I'm collecting a list. Been at the job for two weeks, and I know I'm going to need volunteers on the road. So thank you for all the people that had prayers as I was going through the job change. Thank you for coming and sharing that, and uh, congratulations to you. Any other announcements? If there are no other announcements for our pulpit humor today, on his very first day of the office, a new pastor got a call from his predecessor. He congratulated him on his new charge and told him that in the center drawer of his desk, he had left him three envelopes, all of them numbered in order and that if he got in trouble, he should open them in their order. After a very short-lived honeymoon with the congregation, the heat began to rise, and the minister decided to open the first envelope. His predecessor advised him, blame me for the problem. After all, I'm long gone. I have problems of my own, and if it will help, point out my shortcomings as the reason things are bad. Well, that worked for a while, and then things went sour again. The pastor opened the second envelope, which read, Blame the denomination. They are big and rich. They can take it. Well, that worked well for a while, and then the storm clouds gathered again, and in desperation, the pastor went into his middle drawer, and he opened the third envelope, and it said, Prepare three envelopes. <laughs> Yeah, so birthdays, let's see here. There's a bunch I have written down here, I believe. And again, some of this I got off the computer, so I hope Facebook is accurate. But I have David Rao, Arlene Weiss, Tova Danielson, and Carly Wolf. Do we have any others? Well, let's sing Happy Birthday, Dear Friends. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friends, happy birthday to you. Uh, 
I would ask if you would please stand for our praise song. You have the words to that in the insert of your bulletin, and we'll sing that through a couple of times. Just remain standing and take a moment to meet and greet one another.
Mic check. Can you hear me back there, Toby? Okay, I got a thumbs up, so I'll assume we're good. At this time, I would ask those participating in the baptismal ceremony to please come forward. For those of you in the congregation, you have the order of service there uh, in your bulletin. I'd like to read to you a passage from the Old Testament from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 24 through 28. And then after I read those verses, I'll explain what that has to do with what we're going to be doing here today, because after all, this was actually written many centuries ago. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli the priest. And she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here with this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord." And he worshiped the Lord there at Shiloh. Now what happens before those verses I read is kind of important to understand what's going on there. A woman who is named Hannah comes to the house of the Lord at Shiloh and she's praying fervently to the Lord, asking that he would open her womb so that she might bear a child. And uh, as she's doing this, Eli the priest happens to walk in and he sees that her lips are moving but no sound is coming out of her mouth. And so he actually accuses her of being drunk in church, if you will. And she says, no, that's not the case, but I'm praying that the Lord will give me a son, a child, and, and if he does that, then I will dedicate this child to the service of the Lord all of the days of his life. And so she eventually does have a child and that name is given is Samuel. Samuel becomes one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. In fact, we have two books in the Old Testament named after him, First and Second Samuel. And so, in the same spirit in which Hannah dedicated uh, her child to the Lord, we are going to do this baptismal dedication and dedicate Brantley to the Lord as well. Uh, with one important difference, uh, in the case of the Old Testament passage, uh, Samuel spent much of his early childhood in his life at the temple, and he stayed there, and so we're not going to ask you to leave Brantley here with us. You can take Brantley home with you, so just in case you're worried about that. So uh, that's what we're going to do uh, this morning. And so in that regard, I have to ask some questions of the parents and of the sponsors uh, to take their vows as is appropriate. So to the parents I ask, do you promise to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do. I do. To the parents I ask, do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and to the word of Jesus Christ as best you're able? If so, say, I will with the help of God. To the parents and also to the sponsors, I ask, do you promise to nurture this child by attending church regularly with him, by teaching him how to pray and to study the word of God? If so, say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. To the parents and sponsors, I also ask that you promise that the goal of this nurturing shall be to lead this child to one day profess Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, and to follow God's divine plan for his life. If so, say, I will with the help of God. At this time, I would ask those in the congregation who are able, if you would please stand and if you would follow along uh, with the response as you have it there in your bulletin. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one 
as he lives and grows in Christ. Thank you, congregation. Please be seated. All right, I'll take Bradley now. What are you doing there, little guy? He goes, hey, where's mom? <laughs> what full name have you given this child? Brantley Kenneth John. Brantley Kenneth John. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thought he was going to take a swing at me for a second there. <laughs> Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of your son, Jesus. We ask your blessing upon young Brantley. We ask that he would be filled with joy, even at his young age, and may he never be ashamed to profess Jesus and a personal faith in him. We also ask for your blessing upon the parents and the sponsors of Brantley. May they always show their gratitude for the life that you have given by loving and caring for him. Amen. And now, if you would present Brantley to the congregation, please. Now, on behalf of the Peace Church Sunday School Board of Christian Ed and congregation at large, we'd like to present you with Baby's First Bible Storybook. I'll give this to you, Austin, since Lindsay's hands are a little occupied right now. And uh, these books are pretty durable. Um, you can uh, drool on them, try to tear them, do all kinds of things. They're pretty durable. So uh, we present that to you on behalf of the congregation. And then, of course, no job is done unless the paperwork is done. And so we also have for you in this envelope uh, original certificate of baptism with some photocopies, uh, some extra copies of the bulletin as well. Uh, we encourage you to keep those certificates in a safe place uh, because what happens periodically is we get a phone call from somebody. Uh, they want to know, uh, have a copy of the certificate of baptism from 40 years ago. And uh, we don't keep those in that format. We keep them electronically um, and in logbooks. So, uh, hang on to these, if you would, please, and let's give them a hand. <laughs> That's it. If you take your bullets and inserts, you'll see there a listing of our praises and our prayer requests. I'm aware of an additional request. We have a request to pray for Richard Morgan. That would be Cindy Hoffman's brother, uh, is having some heart-related issues, and so we're asked to pray for a healthy, functioning heart. Do we have uh, other requests, new ones, updates, anything of that sort before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Toby, you have something? Hello all. I'm, uh, I'm here to ask for more prayer and continue prayer, I guess, for Dale Platon. He's, uh, they moved him to a facility in Fargo where they can do uh, 
physical therapy and rehab, and uh, he just has a really, it's a pretty severe infection on his spine. And I just ask that you guys continue to pray and pray for his family. It's beginning, uh, it's a pretty heavy load to, to commute and such, and it's, it's still kind of touch and go, so I appreciate that. Anyone else with a request, an update, a praise, anything of that sort before we go to the Lord this morning? I understand that Taryn Klein is making a, a little bit of a progress. That was a 13-year-old a child that was hit uh, by a vehicle when riding a bicycle, and that was, needless to say, pretty serious. Uh, but they are making some gradual improvements, so family is requesting that we continue to lift him up in prayer. Anything else? If not, then let us speak to the Lord in the privacy of our hearts. That will be followed by a pastoral prayer. Then together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Let's come to his throne of grace at this time. Father, what a blessing it is to know that when we come to you to pray that your word tells us that it is exactly what you desire for us to do, that you want us to come to you as your sons and your daughters in your kingdom to lift up our, our needs and concerns to you for ourselves or for others for that matter, and that we know that you hear us, and in your own way you respond. Sometimes you say yes, sometimes you say no, sometimes you say not yet but you do hear and respond to every prayer that's lifted up to your throne. And so as we come this morning, we continue to lift up those numerous requests that we have on our prayer list this morning. We've heard most recently about uh, the continued need for prayer for Dale. We've heard about Richard Morgan and the heart concerns that are there. Father, for so many others this morning that perhaps we're not put into words. We know that your spirit searches our hearts and minds and knows what those requests are before we speak them, even before we think them as thoughts. And so we'll ask that you would minister to all of those needs and concerns as well, in whatever form they may be. They may be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, whatever it is. We ask that you would be working through the power of your Holy Spirit. You are indeed the great physician, and with you nothing is impossible. And so we ask all these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Loving God, today we bring these tithes and offerings before you. We humbly ask your blessing upon what it is that you intend for them to do. We know that you are a God that scriptures tells us is able to bring life to a valley of dry bones. We know that you are a God who can cause dead roots to grow and produce amazing fruit. And so in this hope and understanding, we ask that you would take which we are giving this morning, that you would allow it to reach out and produce fruits that will lift the spirits of the drown, downtrodden, that will encourage the depressed, that will comfort the grieving, and also guide those who are lost. In Christ, who is our hope, we pray this. Amen.
Please rise for offertory response. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O oh God, from thee. May we thy bounties thus, as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessed us, to thee our first fruits give. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. This morning, I'm happy to introduce Steve Hodgson, and his wife, Lori, is with him. Uh, this would be, I believe, the second time that Steve has been with us. Um, before him, uh, Sterling Odom, and then before that, Rolf Stowers, who was here for probably 12, 13 years he used to come. But uh, every year, the uh, Steer Missions Conference, usually Transworld Radio is at that, and so we would invite them to uh, come and speak to us. And that weekend that they are here, which is normally the first weekend in October, and so that's the case this year. And so I've asked Steve to share a little bit about himself and his family in addition to whatever else it is that the Lord has laid on his hearts to share with you. Um, reminder, Steve, about your goggles to talk a little bit about that. And so, Steve, without further ado, if you'd please come forward. I'm over here. It's well lit. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, as Pastor mentioned, my wife, Lori, and I, um, a year ago when we were here, we were waiting for our seventh grandchild who was to be delivered in December. So that did happen. A cute little girl called um, Naomi Grace on that. And then she just was blessed with a little cousin because Naomi is a tag along. Her other siblings are 10, 8, and 6. And so um, we'd been wondering, you know, how she would grow up in, with that distance of cousins. So uh, we were blessed. My son, who last year we announced, you know, we have a grand dog. We've had that for about seven years with he and his wife. Um, but they had their little girl, Kira Grace, um, just probably three, four months ago on that. So we're blessed up to eight of those little characters now that um, we can just hug and then send home when you're done loving on them. You know, so <laughs> appreciate that. But... For myself, I came to meet Jesus when I was nine years old, grew up in a, a small church, um, that uh, community church that our parents were, my parents were part of, and grandparents and aunts and uncles, and um, I'm pretty sure all of us had some blood relation, it seemed like, at that time. Uh, came out of, we worked out with our dairy farmers. Um, my grandfather chose to not farm, but to have the government pay him to uh, let his land sit and just fertile there, and so we loved it because then we could motorcycle and snowmobile and just roughhouse all around on that uh, nice flat land. But um, early on in my life, God has had called me. I'd always had an interest in being involved in the activities of the church or in my uh, high school and the different Christian clubs that might be there, and um, just found myself to, to have a servant's heart. Uh, Lori and I married 44 years ago. Um, as I shared, I grew up in a family that didn't travel much. We're a blue-collar trucker, my father was. My grandfather was a carpenter, and we built uh, pole barns and such for the other farmers. Lori's family also comes out of that blue-collar marketplace, but somehow somebody planted a bug of travel within her. And so when we married and we chose to go off to Europe for two and a half months, I was a, a school teacher at that time, you know, so you had summers off. And, my parents and grandparents just didn't get it. I mean, they were like, what are you doing running around the globe? But what we know in our thread of our life is God was preparing us for what he's called us to do now. Because as a stewardship director with Trans World Radio, um, and I'd been with um, a former sister agency of theirs, uh, Reach Beyond, HCJB Global, um, that has afforded us and provided a need that we take donors to different sites to see what they're investing in. So that's been a blessing. But our other calling upon our life, too, is we're both servants at heart. And um, 
So we've recently moved to Florida. We landed there um, officially August 2nd. Probably by the 5th of August, we were fully licensed and converted over to whatever, not paying state taxes, because we pay state taxes in Colorado, but not in Florida. Um, but we've spent three years looking where would God have us to move once Lori retired May of this, um, this year. And so in that uh, search, you know, he, he brought us alongside of a little church called the Bridge Church that for 17 years has been unloading trailers and reloading trailers every Sunday as they were in high schools and elementary schools to set up their worship. But then God granted them in 2020, 22 acres, um, that they can now begin to build a, a sanctuary on and, and have that ministry now cemented there. And so we have just been really blessed um, to be engaged with them. They just tagged us again, knowing we're on a road trip for three weeks, and said, hey, will you be home Sunday the 17th? And we're short greeters. Would you guys greet? And um, we just love to step in that gap. But it is just a pleasure to be with you and to um, share God's experiences with you of what he's doing in global missions. I understand the youth were over at the conference this year, and sorry we missed you, but at the end of the service, if you do want to experience our oculars, which is merely a smartphone with an app in it, but you can climb a radio tower, you can look out on the ocean um, from Bonaire, our uh, radio site there, and just enjoy God's beauty and see um, where those airwaves actually go and infiltrate. Um, the amazing thing with Transworld Radio is st we started in 1954, and at which time we had only 20 countries that we were accessing at that time. Today we are in 300 different languages and 190 different countries. So if you look at that 60, 70 years later, that trajectory that God has opened the doors for us with has just been amazing. Um, we run nine different regions around the globe. We have 11 major transmitter sites and um, I, I'm sure you're probably, you can probably relate a little more than some of the um, other business leaders or whatever that run their little corporations as farmers or ranchers, you know, the magnitude of your operation and the cost it takes. Transmitter sites are not inexpensive. Um, many of those are millions of dollars a year it takes to just keep the electricity going and um, keeping them current. So our Guam transmitter site is one of those areas your church has helped with over this past year. That is 40 years old. That's our site that goes into North Korea and into China in particular, and then other parts of that globe in the Asia region. Well, due to the you know, sea salt over the years, we found not so much the upright braces, but the smaller cross braces have begun to really rust significantly. So. God in his providence laid on our leadership's heart a need to begin to put dollars to the cost of repair. And so that, that dollar figure came out to just short of $1.5 million. So leadership came to us, the stewardship team, this past <clears throat> March and said, we really need to put a two-year campaign together and just go before the Lord and ask, would he draw in the hearts of donors of all sizes, whether they're large gifts, small gifts, monthly gifts, churches, individuals, foundations, and um, could we raise that money within two years? And we're glad to say that by the end of May of this year, God had met the complete goal. I mean, we just have been blown away with um, people who've never given to our ministry at all, but had heard through us through different radio programs. I know there's been a couple um, radio stations I've heard that have done campaigns for us that you could be uh, reached up here. You guys could possibly hear them at Denver Station, KPOF, and um, such. But just, I mean, amazing things. And amazing things of, of those people in that fourth quarter of life. I've, I've had a, the pleasure of a couple late 80-year-old individuals who just said, you know, um, God has been so faithful to us, and I know my time is near. My prayer would be that it would be soon, and have just, just ushered blessings on us to say, you know, there's a need to get the gospel out. So, so the Guam Tower project is one we'd still, you know, solicit your prayers that uh, due to COVID, we're not able to get workers from outside uh, that area into Guam. Um, so we're still praying for that because if any of you are wrench turners at all or you like to do that kind of manual work, normally we would have church work teams come and be a part of that. Um, 
some to climb the towers, others probably to hand it, hand that brace to the guy who wants to climb the tower. But, uh, but, but in, like I say, you can experience that if you do our, our um, virtual. But again, you know, God has been gracious. Two other things that have happened over time for us is we, we have 1,350 FM and AM radio stations around the globe that we work with. So the transmitter sites we own and operate within the countries, these FM and AM stations, they're owned by the local indigenous national Christian leaders. And so we come alongside and we help them create content. Uh, we help them uh, learn how to upgrade their equipment, how to do their social media, and work from that, that aspect. The cool thing that's happened over the years is as they, God lays on them a particular topic, a Bible study, let's say, and it may be in Mandarin that's going into China. And the next thing we know, we're hearing the results of, of lives being transformed. And, and it could be as our national directors are talking to each other, maybe our Korean director, Bo's, hears about how successful that teaching program is, whether it's to men, women, or to families. And he'll say, hey, I, I know a national who could take that content and put it into our language for whatever dialect they would need within North Korea or South Korea. And so then we have seen many uh, principles of biblical teaching being transcend so many different language groups. So uh, again, Mandarin was one of those that uh, churches like yourself and, and individuals who give kind of to our general ministry thrust, we call it the Global Media Fund. Um, that was one where you've helped us to really achieve that Mandarin language for China. So, and it's very interesting, China had 33% of the population is offline, um, which would equate to about 463 million people. Um, so pretty significant number that aren't listening digitally online. So what we have been blessed with is we have a movement of China pastors in China who are working with our Chinese office there who are infiltrating and knowing how to navigate, you know, through, a, through the church, um, that church network because the government itself presently, excuse me, presently just as we see in world powers, when we see conflict with the U.S., with other countries and such, or the whole COVID situation, um, you'll find different countries lock down communication. So China at this point, you're not allowing Bibles to be in there, no religious books at all, to, unless it would support uh, their belief system. Um, so, so, but again, with COVID and all, God has kept the doors wide open. Uh, we and our partners have been blessed. We've not lost a beat. Um, Due to faithful people like yourself, we, we helped operationally with a few partners uh, to keep their energies on in that, but um, they were self-sustaining uh, through all of this, which has been incredible. So most recently, people have asked, what about Afghanistan? What's the future? Um, you know, we know it was a country that had, for 20 years, women finally had an opportunity for education beyond the age of 13. A women could walk out into public without having to be escorted by their husband or a brother-in-law or an older son. Um, you know, the, the infiltration of the Taliban caught many people by surprise. And, and yes, they've come into villages and our, our people on the ground are saying they're communicating, we're here to give you hope. Um, but we do know that they're carrying around a list of Christians because two years ago, Evangelical Christians in Afghanistan decided to be brave, and the government opened up an opportunity for them to actually register themselves and proclaim who they are, where they live, and what they believe. And so to this day, the word is that, that they do carry a list around. They are inquiring about where those Christians are. Um, our people on the ground have said they know of none who have been ex executed at this time, um, the two choices people have taken, some have chosen to flee because of too high of a profile and too much to lose as far as in family members. Others have decided to just move out of Cabal and other places and move more out into the countryside where they're less likely to be bothered or even hunted down. So it's, it's great to know that um, even under severe persecution, life-threatening, um, they are still willing to proclaim their their love and connection with Jesus Christ. 
The cool thing for us is we're able to run a half hour program daily. It's live programming. And so we have three um, Afghans who don't live within country, but have access to during that program time to field questions or responses live with people, or at least because many are calling in, you know, get their contact information to follow up at a later time with them. So, you know, just incredible. We know God, God grows his people and grows our faith under persecution. And so please continue to pray, you know, for that movement and what's going on in that country. And of course, um, there have been stories throughout the years with other collaborating ministries in that country, as, as well as Pakistan, when it had a lot of duress a few years ago, that there are, um, there are con- converts that take place amongst those Taliban soldiers. I mean, so many are drawn in as very young men, you know, and it's, it's the way of life. It's not a way of life they would desire, perhaps, to live day in and day out. And so God, in his grace and mercy, yanks them out and, and brings them to a saving faith. So we're excited about what he's doing there. The other um, ministry that continues to really flourish around the globe is one called Women of Hope. And that, um, the essence of them, their vision is to bring hope in Jesus to women around the world and across generations. It says, our mission is to educate, encourage, and equip women to pray, listen, learn, grow, and give through media, small group interactions, and leadership development. And I just, um, jotted down some facts that I saw in them because they're just they're too unbelievable here's what's going on with that group and um, it's just incredible so as we come into 2021 this was our 2020 December data and um, I believe we have some updated stuff that I just didn't have with me today for you but we have over 100 ministry partners just working with women to fulfill that vision and goal. We have 100 languages that we produce a prayer calendar in and is available to them both online, offline. And that's just like with churches and that, that's a monthly uh, prayer calendar that's available to them. We have 11,500 prayer groups around the globe who are gathering to pray as women. 110 who have signed up just to merely be intercessors for the prayer needs and praises that they hear about. There's 750 engagements that take place monthly. So that could be anything from a woman just clicking on the web link, someone actually downloading a prayer calendar, somebody asking a question. Um, But 750,000 women doing that monthly. We're broadcasting in 75 different language groups right now further uh, programs and um, and then the, the crazy things we've got over 400 plus workers and volunteers now across 125 countries so um, yeah I don't know how how often or if if how many of you have had an opportunity to, to go to some of these cultures where um, marriages are arranged and um, you know just think of some of those situations where what those women live within, and then the young women is, is their birth and they're reared in that household. But we are just hearing incredible change life stories. And we use the term self-esteem, women and young women, uh, children being able to find out that God really does love me. You know, I may live in a culture where I just sense that I'm, I'm, I'm worthless. I'm just merely a pawn in someone else's chess game or however you'd put it. But to find that self-worth in Jesus Christ is just um, incredible for us. So, so again, Women of Hope is a, a program. I'm just sharing with you those that are core to our ministries, but it is one that um, was birthed outside of us with a national partner, but we felt the need and, and the calling to really embrace it as something that we fundraise for continually. And then our other one is our Men of Warrior uh, program that has... Um, been very successful. We now have over 3,000 men around the globe participating in that men's Bible study that one teaches you how to um, how to memorize scripture, how to put a prayer life together, how to study the scriptures. It also walks you through men issues that we have and 
And it's amazing to see men's hearts open up and talk about those things that the men face, but we rarely are willing to, over a cup of coffee, talk about financial stress or um, success or failure or struggles in, in husbandry and parenting, etc. cetera. Um, so that's another one that we have, um, again, embraced as a very foundational ministry move for us. But there are some brochures out there on the table if you want to pick one up about the Guam Tower Restoration Project, the Mandarin 66, it's called, which we're now doing in several other languages, a little bit of other information on um, what's going on there. But again, we just thank you for your prayers. We say that, you know, the power of prayer moves mountains. We, we stand firmly convicted and convinced that that the economic um, solvency and the blessings to do what I shared about our Guam project, a $1.5 million project, is just on top of doing $30 million of other uh, funding that we need annually for other projects, to just toss that into the mix is just a, um, a miracle of God to have that happen. But again, we just want to say thank you uh, for for your support and and what, uh, what you're doing here locally, too, because it's local ministry that births hearts towards global ministry. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Steve, when we have our closing hymn, when I process out down the center aisle if you and Lori can follow me and then for those that want to try those those neat goggles that you were to I call them goggles what's the proper term oculars. oculars okay your eyes optics I get it and uh, the oculars uh, they're pretty neat um, you put them on and you'll be sitting or standing up and you'll look down and you'll look like you're a hundred feet below you so anyway the um, Steve will have those out in the atrium area for your use after the service if you want to try those. At this time, we'll have communion. And for those of you that might be our guests, we want you to know that whenever we serve communion at Peace Church, we serve open communion. By that, we simply mean that we invite all believers who wish to partake of communion with us to do so. The way that we do that, the ushers will bring first to you in the pews, the communion wafer. If you would take one and hang on to it till we've all received it and we'll partake of it together. And then in like fashion, uh, they'll bring to you the communion cup in your pew. And again, if you'd hang on to it till we've received it all, uh, then we'll partake of that together as well. But before we partake of this sacrament, let's be in a spirit of prayer so that we might partake of this sacrament in a manner that is worthy and befitting of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. O oh God, we give you thanks through your beloved servant, Jesus Christ, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ was born of Mary and shared our human nature. With loving arms that were outstretched on the cross for us, Jesus broke the chains of evil and destruction. By the resurrection, your will was fulfilled, and you gathered a holy people to offer you praise. Now, with all of creation... We raise our voices to proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, Holy Lord, you are a God of power and might. Heaven and earth are indeed full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Scripture says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward at this time.
Almighty God, to you indeed belong glory, because on the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ, he took bread, he gave it to them, and he gave thanks. And he said, Take the, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat now the body of Christ. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the covenant in my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Drink now of the covenant cup of eternal life.
At this time, congregation, would you please stand? Would you take your hymnals and open to number 659? We'll be singing, we have a story to tell to the nations. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth. First, second, and fourth stanza. Story to tell to the nation That shall turn their hearts to the right A story of truth and mercy a story of peace and light, a story of peace and light. For the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. Leave a song to be sung to the nations that shall lift their hearts to the Lord. A song that shall conquer evil and shatter the spear and sword. And shatter the spear and sword. For the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of Let's bow our heads for the benediction. Our most gracious God, we give you thanks that we have those that serve in the field of missions, that you are a God who wants all people of all points in history, of all languages and all dialects, to know that salvation is possible through Jesus Christ. And we give you thanks and the praise and the honor and the glory. Amen.